Hello, welcome to this ONDR module video, radio head unit repair. This is video 205 in our series of XK videos. And in this video, we're going to show you how we repaired the backlights, uh, the general amplifier, and converted it to Bluetooth without the need for all of these cassettes. Actually, it's got a Bluetooth module built into it now. So we split this video down into several up, uh, chapters or sections as per usual. First of all, we're going to look at the options for adding Bluetooth to your Jaguar X Kate. Secondly, actually removal of the head unit or radio itself. And thirdly, the actual process of adding Bluetooth plus any repairs you might want to do to your head unit. Okay, option one then, options for Bluetooth or adding Bluetooth. So why would you add Bluetooth? Well, it's in order to easily stream music from your uh, mobile phone. It's a very convenient way to do that. Uh, the phone doesn't have to be physically connected to the car. It can be in your pocket. And it's uh, what has become the standard for playing music on a lot of devices now. Um, Bluetooth was int introduced to the XKR, XK8, X100, but only in the last versions in the 2005 uh, model year, and in particular the 4.2S and the Victory Special Edition cars. So unless you've got that car, you're going to have to revert to some retrofitting of Bluetooth. The easiest way to do it is actually just to buy a Bluetooth tape adapter. This will fit directly into your tape deck and use the tape head to transfer music uh, via Bluetooth through the tape head to the uh, onboard amplifier in the radio and therefore able to stream music that way. It's very cheap. You can get one for about £10 in 2023. Another way, again, through eBay or other online auction sites, you can buy a 12-volt FM transmitter or adapter. Now, this uh, works on a similar idea to the tape cassette, but it uses the FM radio frequency, the Bluetooth links um, to a little radio transmitter in the, the adapter and that will pr transmit the music on a certain radio frequency. You then tune your radio to that same frequency and you're able to hear the music. Obviously it is um, slightly compromised by the quality of the transmitter and the radio pickup. The third idea is actually it is uh, you are able to um, fit a Bluetooth module within the existing radio cassette head unit. There's a guy on eBay uh, doing that, Daniel8511. He's asking £85 for fitting the module inside the tape deck. There is also the idea uh, that's available through Discount Stereo, carstereo.com in the USA, actually Bluetooth streaming using the CD multi-changer uh, lead or input on the back of your uh, head unit. You've got this option which is just purely Bluetooth streaming retailing at $129.99 and they also have a more upgraded version which is hands-free and Bluetooth streaming and charging. Uh, that's a little bit more expensive at $191.94 uh, plus shipping, again, available from Discount Car Stereo in the USA. You get a little uh, keypad as well with that, so it's quite handy to skip tracks or forward tracks as well. Another option then is actually just to upgrade the head unit itself to a modern single DIN head unit. You then get DAB radio um, and obviously Bluetooth uh, with a lot of the modern stuff, and you get made possibly a a bigger amplifier and more modern uh, output. Unfortunately, in doing that, um, the head unit isn't a direct swap because of the fascia is slightly different. So you're going to need to buy an ad uh, adapter kit with a different uh, surround to adapt to that single DIN uh, radio shape, particularly the face plate. Also, with these kits, you will need also to get the uh, the wiring harness adapter as well, and also some aerial connections. 
Anyway, the kits retail for one hundred and fifty nine ninety nine, so it also it all of a sudden becomes quite an expensive thing to retrofit a more modern single din radio unit. So the here's the options summary. So first of all, you've got the cassette adapter, which is £10.69, the one we found. The advantage, really, is it's cheap, it's neat, it's easy. The disadvantage, really, is the battery life. The rechargeable batteries inside the cassettes, obviously, because of the small size, they're not very big, they don't last very long. Typically, about four hours. So you are continually recharging the battery, and it becomes a bit of a pain. And in my case, I stopped using it. The FM modular... Modulator, again, it's quite cheap, under £10. The advantage is you've got the functions and the cost is very low. You get uh, USB chargers normally in addition. Uh, unfortunately, the disadvantages are quite bulky. They fit in the cigar lighter socket, but it's quite bulky. It becomes a bit of an eyesore in there, in my, in my opinion. And obviously you get the... The sound coming through the FM radio, the quality isn't always great. Similar with the cassette adapter, you can hear the cassette mechanism running in that case, and it can be a bit noisy, and the the quality of the cassette adapter is also compromised by the head-to-head, head-to-tape sort of pickup uh, unit within the cassette system itself. Uh, the third idea, then, the upgrading the head unit itself you've got the advantage there is originality it looks identical uh, and you've got the extra function of bluetooth the disadvantage is obviously there's no additional functionality it's it's got no dab radio etc and you need to export it from the uk that upgrade is available from a guy in the uk the module cd lead again um, it's quite expensive it is quite good though because it's hidden and the sound quality is excellent because it's coming through the CD multi-changer lead. Disadvantage is really the cost and obviously it's available in the USA so you've got to import it if you're not based over there. There is a second uh, upgrade of that one as well which is even better in that it has a lot more functions, uh, hands-free calling etc. but it has the same disadvantages plus the cost is even greater. Finally, the DAB head unit is actually the most expensive option. Um, but obviously, you do get the DAB radio, uh, all the all the uh, upgrades to modern technology. The disadvantage, obviously, it doesn't retain the originality of the look of the vehicle. And the cost is, is quite, quite high, to be honest. So... In our case, my head unit had no button backlights. I couldn't see them in the dark, which is quite a disadvantage if you do any a lot of night driving. So we decided to remove and make repairs and upgrade the head unit itself, get involved with putting it as it came to the factory, plus adding Bluetooth. So in order to do that, we needed to remove the head unit. So uh, section two then will cover that. So we needed to remove the centre console in order to get at the radio surround. I've done a complete video on removing the centre console. That's video 200. Please take a look at that video. Uh, it's quite involved, so we'll cover that separately. Once that's removed, you can uh, then see six screws around the periphery of the centre console. You need to remove all those six, starting from the top. Um, most of the weight is borne by the bottom screw, so you need to uh, undo those last. So you move the first two screws at the top and work downwards, then removing the centre screws using your X screwdriver, and then finally the lower screws, as I say, which hold most of the weight of the unit. The rad radio surround can then be pulled forwards. Be careful because the plastics is very brittle. Uh, with the radio uh, unit or the radio surround partially out, you should be able to get uh, the wiring loom behind. There's a loom uh, plug up in the opening where you can see the arrow pointing. It's a blue socket in my case. You need to depress the tab and pull it downwards to remove the, the socket. With this loom unplugged, this round should move out even further. Uh, the switch pack has a separate loom. It doesn't need to be removed for what we're doing here. 
you need to move then the whole unit out to one side to access the rear of the head unit to undo, undo all the connectors. First disconnect the radio antenna cable. To do that you just physically pull it out. There's no retainer at all. Just the uh, springiness of the of the outer sheath there. Next is the main white connector, the multi-pin connector. You need to depress the tab and pull out again. Next is the main earth cable which is fixed on with a nut. Just get a socket and you can loosen that off and then undo by hand. Uh, be careful though, don't lose that nut. And I, in our case I used um, a bit of cloth to cover the J-gates around because it's very easy to scratch that. Obviously the, the radio case is metal and when it rubs against the semi um, transparent J gate cover it does scratch it so be careful there. Next is the multi changer wire depress the tab at the top and pull that out again and then the radio surround the radio and its surround is now free to be moved to the bench. Now you need to remove the actual head unit from the plastic surround itself. Be careful the plastic is very brittle you can see the crack in mine already um, trying to not replace it, keep it original, but it's very difficult. You need to depress these two uh, spring clips and push the unit forward to defeat them. This is the only thing holding the radio in place on the chassis. Once you've defeated those clips, you should be able to pull it forward and be removed completely, leaving that mess, uh, metal chassis collar or plastic um, in the plastic surround you can see here and the view from the front for your information. The radio head unit can now can be worked on and uh, in our case can be sent away. The partner with this head unit in our case from a 1996 Jaguar XK is LJA 4100AA and you can see a bit of the spec here it's only 20 watts max power per channel Bear in mind it's got four channels, it's only basically 80 watts, it's not a massively powerful unit um, when it's originally uh, manufactured. Section 3 then, uh, the Bluetooth plus repairs. Now we want to make repairs and upgrade to Bluetooth. First of all we uh, I took a look at the eBay shop of Daniel8511, uh, he specialises in J Jaguar Land Rover Audio audio repairs. So there's listings for adding the Bluetooth module we've already spoke about but there's also a listing for general a head unit repair or radio cassette repair service. It's a little bit more expensive but it's quite comprehensive. It lists a complete refurbishment of the unit which includes um, Repairing distorted sound, volume being erratic, no seeding function, no back light illumination, which is what we're interested. It also will uh, fix any tape mechanism or radio problems. And he was also offering to clear any radio codes, decode them, uh, and giving a six month warranty for all this work. So, first of all, we needed to wrap our radio unit up and in doing that we use plenty of bubble wrap and foam, ins foam inserts to avoid damage. We needed to pay uh, for shipping to Daniel, uh, to his repair facility. Uh, all other costs and the return shipping were covered in the eBay fee. We did write a little note with expect uh, explanation of what we required doing. In our case we wanted the Bluetooth module upgrade and uh, ideally fix the backlighting of the buttons as a minimum. When we actually sent them, we asked for proof of delivery from our shipper and we got this photo and it, I'm just showing you this really because it shows the amount of parcels Daniel's receiving practically daily. There's a big pile of parcels there. So Daniel is not short of work. The details of the repair I'm not sharing in this video. Um, I'm not really interested to be honest. Daniel seems to know what he's doing and uh, I'm not really electronics minded. I'm more production mechanical engineering, um, particularly in press shops and stamping. I'm not electronics at all. I've got a soldering iron but I'm very, very cack handed with it. 
So once he repaired it, we received the unit just over two weeks later. Um, one thing to note when we received it, the operation of the Bluetooth does still need a cassette to trigger it, albeit it doesn't actually uh, run the motors of the cassette. It uses the cassette being present inside the tape deck to trigger turning on the Bluetooth module within the unit. As I say, the cassette motors don't turn, so the unit is basically silent, it's not noisy, it's not connecting via the tape or anything, and the sound is crystal clear. Uh, obviously, the back lights are now working, um, and I'm able to operate the radio in the dark, which is a big advantage. One problem I did find was the back lights aren't very bright as standard, and now I've upgraded all my uh, other switch lights to LED, it does look very, very dim uh, compared to those, so I'm not quite sure I'm going to do in the future for that. Might I have to upgrade the head unit to LED bulbs. One thing I well, didn't uh, um, basically didn't think I would get, but I was very pleased to have it, was the fact that the, the, it's a significant uh, improvement in my perceived sound quality of the head unit once we had it back. Um, the sound sounds... Uh, a bit more powerful and a bit more clarity. It seems to work better with the new speakers I fit in the front. If you're not aware, I fitted some um, uh, component speakers, a, a, a big, uh, well, I'll say a big, a woofer and a tweeter with a crossover in the front. And the original head unit was struggling to power those. They're a little rated a little bit higher than the radio head unit previously. And uh, I can only think that Daniel's. Um, change a few of the capacitors out because it definitely performs a lot better and this it sounds really sweet now really happy with that that was sort of a a bonus uh, with this particular refurbishment of the head unit now as i say it works better than ever and it's guaranteed for six months so a bit of an option summary then so out of all the options the upgraded head unit with the repair included, which was an additional £70, Daniel um, gave me £35 discount on that because I'd ordered the two together. Uh, so the total was £155 for the upgrade of the head unit together with the repairs. So it was still a reasonably priced way of upgrading and getting Bluetooth. I'd like to thank Daniel Binley for all his help. And if you're interested, take a look at his eBay shop, Daniel8511. Okay, there you go. Really great solution and really happy. Um, a bit of a cheat, again, I know. But uh, as I say, there are some things best left to the experts. And needless to say, I'm very happy with my head unit now i believe it's quite up to date albeit there's no dab radio but i can i can pick that up through uh, uh my uh, phone and get dab radio that way anyway thank you very much for watching uh please like comment share and subscribe for more xk videos bye bye